Chasing Cole is Susan Moffat's interpretation and search to discover and make sense of her family's roots in the coal business. Susan returned to the coal country of northeastern Pennsylvania to explore the remains of the Moffat Coal Company. To her, this project felt like stepping in and out of a dream. Moffat Coal Company is a shell of its past. It symbolizes the post-economic decline typical in many U.S. cities. The coal industry and its absence take a toll on the people. Through the lens of this project, Chasing Coal shows the area's struggles and strengths and examines both sides, including the beauty of crumbling historic architecture and landscape and the hard lines etched into the people's faces. Currently, coal is at a critical point, and most recently, Susan was able to connect with and photograph active surface miners. Without much deep mining, strip mining is less dangerous for the workers, but more visible to the earth. What was once a strong culture of coal has evolved. There's now an effort to reclaim the land and replant it, as well as the need for alternative forms of energy. Susan plans to continue to unveil the story in Chasing Coal. Welcome to the Crit House, everybody. You have just seen the work of Susan Moffat and a project she has been working on uh, in the coal country of Pennsylvania. And we have a fantastic show here today with uh, really uh, an honored guest. Amber Bracken is a freelance journalist. She is based in Edmonton, Canada. She is known for her reporting on issues affecting indigenous peoples in North America. Her work explores the, uh, the intersections of race, environment, culture, and decolonization. In uh, 2017, she won the World Press First Prize for Contemporary Issues. And this year, 2022, she won the overall World Press Photo of the Year for this poignant image of girls' dresses draped over crosses to commemorate the discovery of hundreds of unmarked graves at the Kamloops Elementary School. And, and Amber, I, I have to say, this is um, one of the greatest photo photographs I have uh, ever seen. It is moving and poignant and um, so touching. Congratulations on this. And um, thank you for being here on the Crit House. Thank you. Thanks so much. Glenn Ruga is the founder of the Social Documentary Network. He launched the magazine uh, Zeke, the Zeke magazine, the global documentary in 2015. He is also a photographer, a graphic designer, and a curator. And uh, he is uh, here to say maybe a couple of words before we get underway. Glenn, go ahead. Sure. Uh, thank you, Jeff. And it's so great to be partnering with the Crit House on today's review session and also with the upcoming review with Ed Kashi. And I'm so much looking forward to today's review with Amber and Susan. And just want to say if any of your YouTube followers also follow the New York Times, you would have seen Amber's photos last week while she was covering the events around the stabbing of members of the James Smith Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. It's a terrible tragedy, but we're fortunate that Amber can be, uh, can be there to bring us these photos to help us understand the situation. Amber is also one of many internationally renowned instructors teaching with the SDN education program this year. She'll be teaching a class, Art in the Service of Real Life Stories, starting soon after this video is available on YouTube. And you can find out more about Amber's class and all of our other educational opportunities at www.socialdocumentary.net. And you can also find out more about all of SDN's programs supporting documentary photographers in our print and digital magazine, Zeke, at the same link. And let me turn it back to you, Jeff. Thanks, Glenn. And, and for everybody, we'll have the links that Glenn mentioned in the uh, section below, the show notes uh, below. So um, Susan Moffat, uh, she is a fine art documentary photographer. She is a uh, curator and an educator. She's based uh, not far from here in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Her fine art and social documentary images explore culture and humanity. And uh, she studied under some of the great names in photography, including uh, Maggie Stieber, Emmett Gowan, and Olivia Parker. Um, she has exhibited in galleries in the United States and Canada and Portugal and Spain. And uh, Susan, 
Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your project and we'll have a conversation with Amber and Glenn and to see where we can take it. All right, well, it's called um, Chasing Coal and it, it began as a, a personal quest because I grew up in Northeastern Pennsylvania and there's that's coal country. And I, I wanted to find out about the family business called Moffat Coal. We never talked about it when I was growing up. My grandfather and his two brothers owned it and they died before I was born. And it was only a half an hour away from our house. We never talked about it. We never went to visit it. And then as an adult, I, um, I I got really curious. You know, we hear a lot about coal in the in the news, and um, so I sort of dove into it. And I have memories of um, of a jingle on the radio that ended with Moffat Premium Anthracite because it's anthracite coal, which is the hardest and cleanest burning. And you know, kids would tease me about Moffat Premium Anthracite, even though I had no idea what it was. And then I remember, I also have memories of driving along the highway and looking out on the side and seeing gigantic culm dumps, C-U-L-M, which are the, the slag parts of the coal that they can't sell. And, and it smelled like sulfur and sometimes it would steam and burn. So those were memories. And so I decided to um, learn about it and learn about my family and without getting into politics and literally saying it climate change is part of this story because we can't ignore it um, it also touches on the history of coal so i started before covid the year before and then it came to a, a halt and i'm you know back at it again so thanks so thanks um it's a great summary it's a good uh, good additional background to the uh, the statement that we read before um Amber, what do you think? So you're looking at the project. Uh, what's what's your initial reaction to what you think um, Susan should be thinking about? Um, well, I'm seeing some really interesting framing and a sense of um, a sense of intimacy. So it raises questions for me. I want to know more about who are the people that you're photographing. So you're talking about this family coal business. Are these relatives? Are they um, people who are there now? Like what is um, like who who are we seeing? None of them are relatives. I actually knew none of them, nobody before I went there. I went to different parts of um, Pennsylvania um, that I had never been to before. So these are just people I met. And I mean, the, the first photo, that's me. This was a, a, a building that said everybody's goal is mine more coal on one side. And then you'll see images later on that show the other two sides. And I, I took this photograph through the uh, through this old shed and then when I went back the next time it was flattened it was gone so I'm really glad that I got that image before it was no longer there um so anyway but the the people were just people like you know this is where kind of street photography comes in um the people I just came upon I did have meetings with you know coal mine owners and and spoke with them but I don't think I have any of those images. Um, these are just people living in the towns. Yeah, it feels some, somewhat like there's um almost three sets of pictures in here. So there's like a few that feel like they're your, they're almost like uh, self portraits or like you engaging, like, you know, putting yourself in the scene. I, there's the one that you open the, the um, project with, but there's a couple more that I think I see you like maybe in the inside a building. Is that also you? Um, maybe number yeah three? yeah the third third one yeah because I that one I called um, Moffat Cole has ephemerals because I I felt like a a ghost when I was going through through that and mm -hmm. so, yeah so that is me yeah so they are personal responses and then and then I feel or I noticed these um they're really remarkably intimate where you've created some sense of safety around people that. Um, now you're telling me you just met um, where, you, you know, you're quite close and I get to engage with them and they're, they're quite natural. Um, and then there's also some of these scenes that feel like very pulled back, you know, like almost more formal. Um, and I think I like all of those pieces and I'm, I'm finding it a little bit difficult to thread them together or I'm like not necessarily it's almost like the, the energy changes a little bit in between them. So like, this is a good example of like a, a scene 
um, that's very pulled back and formal and composed in a, in a way that the other ones feel more fluid and responsive. Um, right. And I, it's, it's not at all, I like, I like them all, but I, I'm, I'm wondering if there's some work to be done to help them speak to each other a little bit more or to think a bit about how they're even sequenced or um, what the relationship is between them, you know, to make it more from a series of pictures to a narrative story. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I was hoping to get from you was some feedback on, you know, maybe the individual images and as well as the work as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that there are 30 images and that's a huge amount for this um, portfolio review, but I, uh, yeah, I had a hard time trying to figure out which ones to weed out. And I, I hear you that there are kind of sort of different feelings and different stories about some of them, but yeah. So let uh, me ask, um, Glenn, you've seen on your, on SDN, I mean, there are thousands of projects. What's your uh, reaction to what uh, Amber is saying and what's your thought about what you're seeing as well? Yes, so I'll respond from the perspective of the Social Documentary Network and what we look for. Um, I, I would come back to Amber's original statement about who, who are these people. Um, from a social documentary perspective, um, we would love to at least know people's names um, to show that level of respect for the subject. And also, it would be great if there could be some comments from these people. I understand that's not always the point and it's not always necessary. But here, since they are fairly intimate, formal portraits, um, you know, it would be great if we could know something about them. Um, individually, I think, like this picture, I think is fantastic. Uh, compositionally, um, quite a few of the pictures. Uh, let's see, the next three. Can you go through the, the next three pictures? Mm -hmm. That one, this one I really like. Uh, yeah, and, um, but, um, rather than looking at your entire collection of photos and trying to create um, an edited version collectively here, I'm really looking at this as your final edit and then for us to comment on it. And my response would be not necessarily that there are too many photos because you know 30 is okay, but I feel there's some repetition here that there's like a lot of photos of that sign we saw in the first image. Um, I, I think we only need to see that sign really once. Hmm. Um, and, and the last thing is um, whether social documentary or fine art photography, looking at a body of work, uh, I've never been a big fan of mixing color and black and white in one body of work. I, I think to the viewer, um, it, it just kind of points too much attention to the question why, rather than focusing on the picture itself. It's like all of a sudden, oh, why is this one in color and that one's in black and white? And we don't really want the viewer to be thinking about those issues. We would rather have them just focusing on your vision and mm -hmm. what the content is. Um, so, you know, I, I would edit it down because I think there are some really strong pictures here. And I, I think you should um, really bring this number down to the strongest images. And then um, I, I would just make them all black and white, even though some of them look really well in color, like number 12, I think looks great in color. It's just a non sequitur to me to just have um, a color image amongst so many black and white. Before before we move past that, Amber, is that, is that um, from your perspective and your experience, is that something that you see in this as well, that they should it should be consistent um, between black and white and color? I do think consistency is really important. Um, and I mean, I don't like to say universal loot, but I think it, it's one of those things that if you're going to break that like so-called rule, it should be with a real intention. Um, and I don't know that like it should be to emphasize something or for a particular reason, like why are some in color and some are in black and white? Like I've seen it maybe in um, potentially a, a story that mixes like historical photographs and like contemporary photographs and like emphasizes that difference by, by having the contemporary ones in color. But in this case, um, it does just seem uh, like an individual choice, and I would, yeah, I would, I would probably make them consistent. Um, and I do see some really strong images in here that are a little bit—they're like getting watered down by 
other photos from the same scene or even photos that um accomplish the same thing you know and and I think I'm still a little bit lost on what this body of work is trying to say you know are like are these people like what's their relationship to coal country is it just that they live there you know have they been let down by the promises of coal have they been left behind by the government um did did they I, I just I'm not quite sure where they fit I mean possibly for you Susan maybe they just are um an expression of like almost an alternate reality like you're you said you started this project to for yourself I mean that you started this project to explore your own um history with Moffat Cole and try and find something out and now you've moved away from there your family's moved away from there like are you are these people like um to a certain extent like uh you living vicariously or like exploring like a an alternate history for yourself or or like why why these people i guess is my big question well i think you know back in the day of coal things were different there was money the houses weren't falling apart and i i just feel like these people have been forgotten by the government um they don't really even think about coal if you go back to the the color number six um I asked these, there were a bunch of teens. It was, first of all, I, I couldn't make this one black and white because I just love the color in this one so much. And it, so I was attracted to uh, the humane on the fire truck and the door. And um, I asked those, the the teens, I said, so do you have any interest in, you know, working in the coal company? Because, and they said, no, why would we? I said, because, I mean, you can, the people who work in coal make a lot more than working at the dollar store or whatever else they have in that town, you know, so they, they don't even think about coal anymore, which is, which is okay. Cause it's not so much a part of their, of their lives. Their parents don't work in coal and, but everybody I spoke with their grandparents had all worked in the mines and had black lung or, you know, were harmed in some way um yeah wait was that your question what was your oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> um so I love what you're saying here and I would love for that narrative to somehow exist for um the viewers of this project when you're not there to talk about it mm -hmm. well I did have um captions and titles but then I left them out so do you think it's important to have um captions and titles to tell a little bit more about the story? Uh, I was... Yeah, I understand why in this presentation um, we wouldn't be having that. I, I don't remember exactly what was on the SDN website, how much text was there. And if you had it there, I then apologize because if you have it there, that um, serves well, I, that purpose. I did, but these most of these are, there are only a few that are on the SDN website. These are all newer than that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and I will I will put the uh, the caveat in there that we did have a conversation about whether the having captions in for this presentation would be helpful, and we just uh, decided that we would try to focus on the imagery less on the uh, on the captions and the narration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Amber, when when you I think you mentioned before, or maybe it was Susan about sequencing um, and how. And I, 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 maybe it's maybe it's a hard question to answer because there you, you're still trying to figure out what the, what the story is. Um, but what what can you say about the sequencing of a project like this? Or is it or is it too is it too early to have that discussion? Um, well, I think that Susan, if you could find three pictures in the story that encapsulate a story that you're trying to tell, you know, and not just because you like them, but because they relate to some, the narrative of what drew you there in the first place. I think that would be a really good place to begin. Um, and that's what I like, uh, that's what I mean sometimes about like, uh, like art and service, right? So like when we're, when we're trying to make a, a story um, out in the world, sometimes there's like amazing imagery and then there's imagery that tells the story. And obviously we're trying to get those to be the same thing, but they're not always the same. Mm -hmm. So the really painful thing to do is sometimes um, 
tossing out or like not including some of our favorite pictures that don't necessarily relate to the story at hand you know okay I think the first one should remain as one of those three <sighs> except it's in color um doesn't always have to be in color yeah no okay um it's a hard question I know it is because yeah. it makes me realize even more that there it might be more than one story of the, with these 30 images. Um, but that, well, but that well, in I and of itself feel... is, a, is an interesting thought that you've just started to realize there are more than more than one story. Glenn, go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Um, I think it can be all one story, but as Amber is alluding to, what, what are the three main tracks here? Um, for me, what I'm seeing are kind of pictures like landscape pictures from a distance like like this one. And then you have the more um, in the moment with people um, more like like that one and there are many other ones like that. Um, I might have a hard time saying what the third strain would be. Yeah, I could agree to that. If you um, could boil it, like, I do think there's there's two different ways to do this. One is to get really clear on what the three threads are that you're braiding together, as Glenn suggests. And the other thing is to possibly pull them apart into a different story. So one would be a very personal exploration of your family history and relationship to Moffat Cole. Mm -hmm. And the other would be um, a, an exploration with the, the people who live there now. And and uh, they're almost non-relationship to Cole, um, which I would love to see you explore some of these folks' family histories, honestly. Uh, like, you know, you, you said the teenagers, everyone's grandparents worked in the in the mines and got black lung and whatnot. Um, I'd like to know more about that and sort of what are they doing now? What are these what are these young people doing now? They'd rather work in the dollar store or, you know, maybe go to school in the city or whatever it is that they're up to. I love this picture. I think this is one of the most interesting um, compositionally. Thank you. Um, this one is called Lack of Trust. The story behind this is she she lives in a house with 15 cats. It's not that house. It's the one to the left of it. And she was really angry because her mother had just given one of the cats to another family. And Have you said if the mine still exists in any capacity now? Is, is it still functioning at all? Um, no, there are active strip mining mines. Um, the Moffat Coal is just a, a shell of the past. It's it's on 90 acres of land on the top of this town of Taylor, Pennsylvania. And it's just, you know, it's just a ruin. People aren't allowed to go there. And they've been trying to sell it for decades, but no one wants to buy it because of what's under the earth. Yeah. So, so in the in the couple of minutes that we've had since uh, we talked about having the three images, Susan, is there, are there anything you, you would identify this one as being one you'd think is important to keep in? Are there, are yeah. there two other ones that, uh, as we were going through them, that you said that should be there? Um, I, I, <laughs> I feel like I'm being put on the spot. Okay. Um, I, I think, I think maybe. I do agree that there should be a section on just the coal, the Moffat coal, and then an easy solution for that would be numbers two, three, and, and the um, piece of coal at the very end. I mean, that's an easy, that's an easy pairing. Um, yeah. Um, but then, you know, there, as you said, there are lots of people photographs and every photograph has a story. Um so I suppose I would choose, you know, the one that Glenn is attracted and and then the one of the Badlands. This man had, it's, where is that? It's number 15 with 18. And he's the one who actually took the cat. And so this little girl did not like him anymore, but he it's his Badlands tattoo is he moved from Philadelphia from the section of the Badlands. And he said that, um, uh, he said that, 
he moved there because it was too dangerous, but he said now everybody's moving from this Mahanoy city, which is a small town, um, because he said they're all racist. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, they're all racist because colored people are coming in and they're leaving town because of it. And he said, I'm not racist because my daughter is um, Puerto Rican. If you go two down, you'll see that photo. So, I mean, there's definitely, there are three of the, the woman behind in the back is the daughter. Um, I actually like this photo much better than the one of him individually. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I do see that in this work that I um I'm not sure <clears throat> what you how you engage, but you must be very engaging because there's a, a natural sense with most of these. Um and a, like I say, a sense of intimacy, which is not necessarily easy to accomplish from a flat footed coming in off the street. Yeah. Um <clears throat> so I would say, you know, kudos on being very human because you're you're allowing people to connect with you, which is um really it's, it's a hard thing to teach and I, I don't often see this in other people in people's work um thanks like this is really lovely yeah um, yeah thank you so I, people always say well you're always behind your camera but that's kind of my my opening to talk to people and let them let me into their lives and and people you know I'm small and I'm a woman and people are never threatened by me mm -hmm. so, yeah well, um, this has been a really interesting conversation. Glenn, I'm going to let you have a, a, a last word before we wrap it up. Do you have any last thoughts uh, for Susan and what she might want to think of, either the, to reiterate or something new that we haven't discussed? Well, I, I would definitely encourage you to, to keep at it if, if you can and, and to keep working on the edit based on comments today and other comments you may have. And, and then put together a completed project and get it out there in the world, however you can. You, know, you already have it on the SDN website. Uh, there are other websites, um, you know, maybe an exhibition. I, I don't think it's quite enough work to make a book out of at this point. And books are hard, but um, but maybe if you keep at it eventually, you know, you know books take a long time. And, but um, the bottom line is though, I think it's a worthwhile project and you should uh, figure out how to complete it in the strongest way possible and get it out there in the world. Thank Thanks, you. Lynn. Amber, from your um, yeah, I I want to see more. I want to see more about these these individuals, and I think if you um could like tease out that story, mm -hmm. so like to my mind, I think either you dig deeper into what's their story in relationship to coal. If this is about coal, I want to know what their relationship to coal is, even if it's only the background to their lives. I want to know more about that. You already have a really great sense of uh, connection and intimacy, but I would like to see that teased out more in terms of how do they connect to Cole or the other direction I could see you taking it is how do you relate to Cole? You know, like it's either very personal or it's like the disparate other. Um, and in both cases, I think you've sort of established that Cole exists, but I'm not 100% clear on how, what that link is. And I think that is the the like the key that's the nut graph to figuring out to taking this from a collection of really lovely pictures that are loosely related to coal into some kind of a narrative that tells a story and to that that um emphasizes different you know people's uh relationships and and life and how coal impacts them right because coal is an idea is just coal but it's always about how does it affect people and there's two sort of like threads here of who those people are it's either you or them and I want to know more about that relationship, but you do have a lovely, a lovely set of images. And um, yeah, I think that this is definitely worth pursuing. And I would just like to see you dig into the connections a little bit more. And um, I hope that you will. Thank you. Well, the, yeah. No, go ahead, Susan. Um, this has been so um, helpful and in, in what powerful comments I've heard. And I, you know, i I'll uh, go with this. So thanks so much. Good. I'm honored. Well, I'm 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 glad you found it useful, and I, I, that's why the Crit House is here. It's really to try to show how um, input and different perspectives can help photographers move a project along to the next level. Um, and Susan, let me just say, I mean, it, it it's yeah. I I think I put you on the spot there, for which I apologize. Um, but the uh, and, and, and your, your courage in showing your work when it's still in progress is, is, is really heartening. So thank you for participating in the Crit House and showing your work. And we look forward to seeing what, uh, what you do at the next, at the next level and where it goes. 
Um, Glenn Ruga, the founder of the Social Documentary Network, thank you for the partnership for this and for upcoming episodes as well. Um, it's greatly appreciated. We like working uh, with SDN. We think that the work that's, that you're doing over there is fantastic. And again, for everybody, we will have in the comments below or in the, uh, the show notes below links to all of SDN's work. Um, and Amber Bracken, um, just such an honor to have you join us uh, and with and give your input here on the, the Crit House. It's, uh, um, I'm sure that your, your workshop with SDN is going to be fantastic. And, um, and the work that you have done, and I'm sure will continue to do, is just Amazing. We're really honored to have you here with us. Um, I'm going to link to two videos for you to take a look at. One is for uh, uh, Amber's work on the World Press Photo of the Year from 2022 and what happened with that amazing project and an SDN video, The Images of Conflict and Peace. And I want to thank you all for joining us on the Crit House. <laughs>